What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, I'm taking you along fishing. Never been to this lake before, so it should be fun trying to break it down and try and catch a few fish. Like I said, never been to this lake before. As you can see behind me, the current is ripping. Uh, this lake is current driven. It's on the TVA system. Uh, like I said, never, haven't been here before. And I've heard that the water levels fluctuate, the dams, you know, periodically release water. So it's going to be fun. I brought probably, I don't know, 15 different rods. I got everything from four pound drop shot spinning gear all the way up to 65 pound test straight braid frog. And, you know, so I don't know what we're going to find. I got to the first ramp and it was closed. So I had to drive around and find another ramp but uh, it's all part of the game, right? So because the current is going, I think I'm gonna run up and try and find some eddies, some current breaks, maybe catch a smallmouth or some spotted bass. And if that doesn't work, then I'll head uh, down, down lake and try and find some grass or some backwaters or something out of the current and see if we can find some grass and some largemouth. So the, the river is pumping. I'm literally idling trying to go up lake and the current is, is holding me. I'm not even really making any ground. Uh, but I want to talk to you guys about breaking down new fisheries. You know, um, it can be overwhelming. Don't bite off more than you can chew and start with your confidence bait. Start with your confidence techniques and then branch out from there because it can be overwhelming, right? <clears throat> I was up at like midnight last night just looking at this lake on Google Earth. Like I said, hadn't been here before, wanted to at least see it, um, dropped a few different waypoints and stuff, but you know, my mind was just going. And that's one of my things that I struggle with, right? I, I wanna bring 57 rods because I, what if I can catch them on this or, or they're eating this or, so what I can say from my experience and my, my uh, time trying to break down new fisheries is, is keep it simple fish your confidence baits and techniques first and then branch out from there you know you don't want to show up to a new fishery and try and break down the entire lake with every rod in your arsenal right um and with that said don't try and break down the entire lake in a day you know take certain areas break down that and then go from there you know like i said you don't want to bite off more than you can chew and you don't want to um overthink things. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go try and catch some fish. I have no idea what I hooked, but it's a fish. You <laughs> see this drag?
if this thing gets me on the current, I am done for. I don't know if this is a big striper, a big cat, a big drum. I have no idea. It's taken about know, 75 yards of drag. This is ridiculous. I'm wondering if it's a big old drum. Put a lot of extra pressure on this thing just because I don't want to waste a half hour hoping to at least see what it is. It's a giant drum. <laughs> and I mean giant. Like 25, 30 pounds. <laughs> I got this new boat, I don't even know how to get the net out. <laughs> and I don't think this thing's gonna fit in this net. I'm fishing <laughs> five pound Sunline FC just shows you the strength of this line with a proper drag. You can catch just about anything as long as you're willing to wait. I'm not sure I'm willing to wait much longer. Those of you guys that have followed the channel for a long time know that I caught the uh, world record channel catfish. I was bass fishing. I was throwing a Nico rig on six pound sunline. And uh, I think an hour and six minutes later, I landed that fish. And uh, as long as you have the proper gear, this is that NRX plus 902, fairly light rod. Shimano Stella with, uh, I think this was five, it might be six, but this thing is just dogging me. Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's a little bit of eddy current. If this thing gets out in the main current, I'm toast. I mean, that, that current's going five miles an hour, but uh, hopefully we can get this thing in the boat here shortly. start adding some extra pressure see if I can get this thing up if not I'm gonna pop it it's probably the biggest drum I've ever caught and I've caught some giants
been fighting this thing so long that camera died so i just grabbed the chesty see if i can at least show you guys the size of this fish Come on, get up here. Come on, come on up. start holding this drag back see if we can get this thing to come up to the top so you can at least see it I'm not even sure I want this thing in the boat how slimy it'll be come on bud Come on. All right, a little added pressure. Come on. Come on up just one time to show the camera. Just one time to show the camera. Almost there. Come on. Just one time. Oh, he's off. That was fun for the first, I don't know, two minutes. And then was just ridiculous. Think I was 25 minutes into that fight. So let's go try and catch an actual bass. It's like a big smallmouth. Nice smallie. Humpback smallmouth. Look at the shape of this guy. <laughs> Big old head on him. So that fish is sitting right here in this current sea, in this eddy. Oh, he's slime. I line up. Let's so pull another one real quick before we tie. There's 
So you get the current going this way, and then around this point, it's gonna circle back and it's actually gonna pull this way, and those fish will sit nosed in to the current, waiting for the, the bait to be brought to them. Oh, just missed one. That was a goofy looking smallmouth. Big old head, big old shoulders, and that's about it. All right, time for a new bait. So I think we're gonna move. This is the first spot I picked just because of how much current there was, and I wanted some current breaks and some seams. Felt like a bite. Um, there's definitely some bass in here. Caught one nice small mouth and that got destroyed by that big old drum. But uh, we don't wanna to spend too much time on our first spot. All about breaking down the lake, you wanna fish more than one spot, obviously. There's definitely a ton of bait and a ton of fish here. Ooh. That's definitely a bite. When you're fishing these walls, these pilings, it's really important to get right on the piling. You want your bait to go right down that wall. Look at this large mouth. You are fatty. Pull up to this point. <clears throat> Again, it's another current break. <laughs> Look how fat that dude is. Thanks, bud. It's just a little eddy. Let's this fish get out of the current. <clears throat> There's a little backwater here, so I'm gonna kind of fish through that with the top water and and uh, I'll come back out to this little point and fish with a swim bait and stuff, but uh, should be some bigger fish back in here. Not the right species. The drum wants to take me for a ride. Go ahead and get out of here. But again, like I said, this looks really fishy. Again, I'm not trying to uh, fish only two spots today. I want to fish a few different spots on this lake. So um, found some good spots here. We'll keep running down and see if we can find more.
That dude spit out a bunch of bait as he went flying. That was a little spotted bass, like a pound, pound and a half or so, right on the corner of this eddy. Back there in the shade. Largy. <laughs> Saw that wood in the water. Made a little back hand flip to it and no 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 this little large mouth. Again, it's just a current break. They're still pumping water. It's, it's flowing good. So I'm just looking for anything that uh, these fish can hide behind and get out of the current and ambush. Come on, dude. On the underspin, uh, they're hitting the blades. Anytime I get out into the actual current on the break, it's stacked with fish, but I've had a few bites. There's gotta be big smallmouth and stuff mixed in with them. Uh, right now I'm just looking for some, looking for some uh, back areas, shaded, it's still sunny, but we're shaded up against this wall, uh, looking for largemouth and, and caught one, missed one back there. But I think this is as far down as we're gonna go today. I do, as I was running down, I ran down several miles. Uh, I saw some different areas that I wanna stop and fish back on the way back up and then eventually end where we started where all those fish were where I caught that good smallmouth. Um, but uh, again, when you're breaking down a water, a body of water, you wanna move, move, move. Just make little mental notes. You know, you don't need to catch all of them in one spot. Nice if you can, but uh, you know, I've seen several miles now of this lake that I hadn't before and, and I really like it. Just finding those key little spots, those eddies where those fish can get out of the out of the current and then the hard pieces of cover or structure that they can get in front of or behind and ambush from. Like I said, right there, there's that, uh, that tree that comes out and just saw that, flipped that top water bait out and that little guy ate it. There's a little guy on top. But again, it's finding where these fish should be. A little backwater off of that. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Nothing to write home about, but any one of these blow-ups can be a, you know, three to five pounders. So we'll keep checking it and hopefully get a good one.
That was a better spot. Spin. These fish are schooled up here. Uh, when I moved up a little bit, they started busting behind me. Saw some spots, some smallmouth mixed in. Uh, but these fish are actually back off of that hard structure. So that hard piece of metal right there, that creates a current break. Those fish are actually back here in the seam. Kind of interesting, but uh, they're hitting it more than once. Every fish I've hooked, I've gotten bit, popped it, Missed it, bit, popped it, missed it, and then it loads up. So they're definitely schooling up. Let's see if we can get a, a good one. Oh, right there. <laughs> Jeez. Might have to back up even farther. Might be time to change out my swim bait. I don't know if you guys have seen. I might cut some of these fish catches out, but. I'm still on my first swim bait. I've been <laughs> camera died right as I was talking about. I'm still on the same swim bait and uh, caught another fish. We're gonna wrap it up there. Drift down the lake a little bit, but um, good day. You know that uh, started out with that giant drum. I wish you guys could have seen it. I fought that thing so long that the battery died on this camera. Mid fight, I threw on the chesty. Uh, got to see it twice. I mean, the thing was like, I mean, I've caught 20 plus pound drum. Thing had to be 25 to 30. By far my PB drum uh, on five or six pound test on that little underspin. But um, let me get over here real quick. Really cool lake. I like the way that it lays out. Uh, I gotta be completely honest, I was a little unprepared for this much uh, current. They were pushing about 50,000 CFS. But right now it's lower on all the walls and rocks. You can see about four inches uh, where the water's dropped. So they were really pumping it earlier. But um, ran the lake, not all of it by any means, but ran a, a chunk of the lake and uh, kind of develop the pattern. Anytime there was a current seam or a current break or some kind of shade line around the current break, there was fish there. I can't even tell you how many bites I got today. I'll probably cut out a lot of the stuff that I didn't hook. Um, I'm not even sure they were bass, but I was throwing mainly that underspin and the top water and they would come up and just whack it. Um, they could have been bass because that school of spots and that smaller that I got on a little bit ago, um, they would hit it two or three times and finally I'd hook up. But um, again, you guys, when you're breaking down a new fishery, it's really important to start with your confidence baits. You guys saw me, I threw top water quite a bit today. I have a ton of confidence this time of the year in top water. Um, and then throwing the little finesse stuff. I was throwing, started off trying to throw a Ned rig, a drop shot, a little 2.8 on an underspin. Uh, and then picked up some of the bigger baits. You know, the, the biggie, square bill, the whopper plopper, bigger swim bait. And then did most of my work on this guy right here. That's that, um, this guy right here. That's the gizzard shad color in the Largo shad. That's a three inch 
paired up with a quarter ounce Gamakatsu uh, underspin head. Again, that thing has that screw on keeper system and this is only my second bait that I used all day. There's the pack to show one, two. Um, pretty cool. You guys know when you're fishing on a budget, you don't need to go through a bunch of baits. It's nice when you have a, a keeper system that really uh, allows you to catch a lot of fish and not go through a lot of baits. Had that paired up on a little 610 medium X pride with an outer baron. That is a 20 pound sunline uh, braided line to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. If I would have hooked that big drum on that setup early on, I could have got that thing to the boat a lot faster. But again, playing that thing, I bet I fought that thing. It was over 25 minutes. So, um, but I uh, caught a bunch of smaller largemouth. I caught spots. I caught smallies. Uh, I caught the trifecta today. But again, very cool lake. Lots of current. Uh, maybe next time, it, you know, it's all about putting that puzzle piece together. Putting that puzzle together. You're getting the pieces, trying to put it together. Uh, maybe next time I'd run the di a different part of the lake, maybe where the lake opens up and more backwaters, because that's where I really feel that those largemouth are going to be the bigger largemouth. Um, backwaters, warmer water, slower water, more grass. I didn't see any grass today. Again, if there was any grass in this area, this section of the lake that I fished today, it's it's long gone now because they had it pumping today. But um, guys, breaking down new fisheries, start with your confidence baits, start with your confidence areas, spend a little bit of time looking it up on Google Earth, Google Maps, whatever. Uh, drop some drop some waypoints on your phone, just save some spots on your phone. That way when you're on the fishery, you can pull up Google Maps and uh, find those areas that you want to look at if it's not on your on your chip. Um, but uh, it's all about catching fish, finding those fish, catching fish, and putting those pieces of the puzzle together. I feel like if I came out tomorrow, I would, I've eliminated a lot of the water that I fished today. I have key areas that I know that hold fish, that hold bait, and I could just create a milk run from that. And then just gradually learning more and more of the lake, learning, you know, when and, and how much current affects things. It's all those puzzle pieces, putting it together, to break down the lake. Guys, if you like these types of videos, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we will see you guys on the next video.